Welcome to DNN Connect 2018. Um, we are enormously pleased uh, to see so many of you return. Of course, many, many familiar faces. Um, some people who were not here last year or haven't been here for two years uh, and have come back. I see Rob and Anna have come back. Uh, Gahal will be back of all people soon. Nick we hadn't seen in quite a while. Um, the royal family, uh, I believe, is also on their way. Um, so yeah, we are, um, we are thrilled that so many of you have come back and we managed to increase the numbers again this year. So uh, kudos to you, kudos to you guys all. Um, I would just like to uh, run over a, a couple of points. I think the, um, uh, most of you are aware that a couple of things changed uh, over the past year in, in DNN. And uh, just to do a little tour history of DNN and see where we are today. Um, so as you all know, uh, I, I, I would like to separate it into DNN V1, V2, V3, and we're now embarking on phase number three on V3. Um, so the DNN V1 was the benevolent dictator model where uh, Sean was the uh, benevolent dictator of our community. We had a um, small core team of something like 20 odd people, if I remember correctly. Um, we had a text-based chat to talk to each other every, what was it, month? Um, yeah, and um, we had, uh, the, the, like, who was in that core team? There were like four people who were actually able to commit code to the vault. Trustees. Trustees. I don't know, if, I, I think that term came a bit later, but yeah, the, the, the people with vault access, Hands up for those who had Vault access back in those days. I, uh, Joe and Vicente, I know because Vicente, Vicente had it as well. Um, and uh, then the, the, it was augmented with team leads of modules, right? So people who had a DNA core module and a team lead. Hands up for those that were in that role. So I see some in the back there and here, familiar faces. There you go. Um, so we would chat online and it would have different colors if I remember correctly. That's where you kind of made sense of who was who was talking um, and uh, uh, yeah if you think back from our video conferencing today to those days how archaic things were it's a miracle anything ever got built. Um, <laughs> so anyway uh, that was and the coding was done mostly in small sprints ideas that people contributed and the code base was roughly, and now I'm going to look at statistics because I actually looked up this stuff. DNN v3, we're talking about 41,000 lines of code. That's still quite and, a bit of lines of code. And maybe 10,000 contributed by Bichette. Exactly, <laughs> of those 10,000 in localization uh, contributed by, <laughs> by Bichette. But did you, uh, Bichette, did you code all of that by yourself, the whole localization part? Yeah, yeah. No. no? All right, all right. So, and, and how long did that take you, roughly, to, uh, to make that? Nine months. Yeah, nine months. You, you had the time back though, in those days. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky your business wasn't doing that well at the time. Okay. <laughs> Working at the university. <laughs> so, uh, oh, that's right, you were, still, you were still at university? Working for the university, that's right, yeah. So anyway, uh, so then we moved to V2. This, at this point, uh, Joe, Nick, and uh, Scott Wilhite, who's not here, and Sean's not here, um, you know, formed DNA Corp and found uh, venture capital in California. Uh, this is the San Mateo period. Uh, and of course, this, is, this changed a lot. And in part, you know, we're gonna, um, I think this is uh, you know, more or less public knowledge, of course, that history where uh, the DNN platform was more or less a byproduct of their freemium model, you know, pro product that they were building at the end of it. And it also led to a lot of anxiety and um, pain within the community as we had to kind of wait and see whatever would come on the roadmap. We were no longer involved in creating that roadmap. 
Um, we would just hear at some point, we'd be informed what was going to come. And uh, there were benefits because at some point their, their, their mechanism for testing the platform became a lot better, more solid, so our releases became more solid. Um, and, you know, it, but on the whole, you know, a mixed bag of experiences and um, quite a bit of frustration from the community, if I may say so. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, at that time also the core modules were floated off. That has always been also been a pain point, but at this point in time, um, it was obvious that there were you know, competing open source modules doing more or less the same thing, whether certain modules were still relevant within the, within the realm, etc. So to simplify matters and to decouple the platform release from the release of those modules, which was always a painful and complex process in V1, um, the decision was taken to float off the modules, which made DNN less of a CMS and more of a, just a framework that you would install and then have to invent what you could do with it. Um, so again, you know, decisions, decisions. I'm, you know, we can we can dwell on them, but you know that's the way we more or less went. Um, so uh, then, right? Well, V3. So here we are today. Um, as you all know, uh, BNN Corp has been acquired by uh, a, a nebulous entity called ESW. <laughs> that um, that we you know we all. Jobby said, like, EW? Who? Uh, okay. Um, Google. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Andy uh, popped up, like, okay, well, that's the new CEO. Okay. Uh, who's he? Um, <laughs> look up LinkedIn, etc. cetera. And. Um, uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Eric. And Kahal. Um, at this point in time, you know, we, we, uh, we're very excited because, uh, of course, a number of things have changed and uh, community all of a sudden has been brought back to kind of the mainstream of the development of the platform. Um, we now have various teams that drive various aspects of the platform. I'm not going to mow the grass in front of uh, Andy's speech tomorrow, so I will, I will leave it there. Most of you have uh, at least read about uh, what has happened. So um, with that, uh, and then uh, other notes I had, well, at the moment, our code base is from 41,000 lines, 42,000 almost, we grew to 233,000 lines. So there's a bit more code, and there's a bit more management, and there's a bit more maintenance that needs to be done, of course, on the platform. And I think that kind of speaks volumes about you know, the challenges that we're facing uh, with DNN, and also you know, where the opportunities lie for us uh, in the near future. Um, so with that, I mean, we have compiled a program of a whole bunch of different subjects. Um, but, uh, you know, notably also we've tried to uh, give a platform to people to present new ideas, uh, how to um, create modules in, you know, F-sharp or, uh, you know, new, new development philosophies, um, debate.net core, because that's, a, of course, a recurring theme. Um, I certainly hope that all of you find inspiration from, uh, from the speakers. That we that we bring to you, um, and uh, you know already up front, I'd like to thank those that submitted sessions uh, for this conference. Thank you very much. Without you, no conference. <laughs> oh hello, it's the royal family. <laughs> All right, so anyway, and um, then of course, without my team, there would be no conference, but I will be talking more about them on the Saturday night, uh, but already a big thank you for, uh, for the team. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
especially Declan, Declan, our point man here in, in Ireland, our Irish team member. Okay, last but not least, um, so uh, a couple of household uh, items. Uh, I would like to have a, a speaker's get together um, just outside the common room, for instance, like we meet together at, so we say 10.30 or 11, 11-ish, right? That'd be okay, 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock speakers at the common room, please. Because there's just a couple of things I, we discovered also today with the technology, uh, etc., that I want to share uh, how to do things. Um, otherwise, the beer in the common room is bought by us already. So that's quote unquote free. Everything that you consume here, I mean, during the meal, right, the, the wine, uh, we took care of that as well. But at the bar, again, you'll have to pay. Um, on Saturday, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but we have two consumptions, right, with the barbecue that we're holding. Um, so again, it's not endless, uh, this, because, yeah, they apparently run a business here and they want money. <laughs> so <laughs> they didn't quite get this whole open source spirit. I don't know <laughs> why. <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, then uh, and finally, I would like to round off by thanking um, our sponsors, without whom, of course, this would not be possible. So I'm going to make sure I have that list in front of me because it's very embarrassing if you miss one. Um, but Dean and Corp. Um, <laughs> Too sick. <laughs> Excess. <laughs> Blue Vault. <laughs> Forty Fingers. <laughs> uh, Glanton. <laughs> ITI. <laughs> Chips. And Cantaris. Thank you very much to those sponsors. Thanks a lot. Uh, without you, no beer, uh, as you know. And I'll give the mic now to uh, to Becky. Just, I just want to make sure you're all aware that Mike, don't be stubborn. Yes. I just want to make sure you're all aware how the door locks on your rooms work. You must use the key to lock the door. Walking out of your room and pulling the door behind you does not lock the door. <laughs> Those of you who need to run down they do so. The other door in the apartment of six units does lock automatically, so it's only the other one that's working. Huh? Sorry, Eric, you don't have a door. <laughs>